You requested it, so this is a video on script icons. And we're not talking about the one in project settings to represent your game. We're talking about the script icons that you apply to scripts to enable you to see icons in the scene view and on the project view. And I'm gonna show you what they are, and I'm gonna show you an elegant little script that enables you to apply them to multiple scripts in one go without having to use Unity's terrible manual process of putting icons on scripts. So let's get to it. So we'll start with what they are. Well. Let's jump to our scene view and we can see plenty of icons here for the pro, particle effects, lights, etc. Now I have a door here and it has the door script applied and it's just a basic script. Now, but as we can see here, it doesn't have an icon assigned to it yet. Now if I select it, I come to the icon and I select other, it brings up this box here. And I can go through and I can find the icon I'm interested in, in this icon door that I've assigned earlier. Now I double click it, press on Unity again, it processes. And then the icon is applied. And as you can see, my door icon here. Now you might ask, why would I do this? Well, it enables me to quickly, during development, visualize where doors have been applied in my scene and where they haven't. And that can be particularly useful when you're creating big scenes like this or items with loads of components that need to be linked together. So let's look at another example where these icons would be useful. We'll pop into our script here, item data, which is a scriptable object. Now, when we create these scriptable objects and we look at data, for instance, here, and I've got some item data, you can see it has a boring plain icon. And this would be the same for every scriptable icon you make. Now, how are you going to distinguish those? Because we want icons like the animator and the animations going on. Well, I can basically come into item data and I can select a different icon. And we've got our icon set up here and I know I'm going to use the icon item. So I press down, other, bring this across so you can see it. I come into item and there's my icon there. Now, once I press on Unity and it applies it, it doesn't actually apply automatically to the item we have. We actually have to do a re-import. Now, if you were to restart Unity, you'd see this. We close the folder and we come open. So when you restart Unity, this happens automatically. And when you create a new piece of item data, for instance, here we go, you can see now I've got these great icons showing me that this is item data and I can distinguish it from other data I would put into my project. Now, I know some people watching this will be saying to themselves, well, I just turn off all the icons because I find the scene too cluttered because there's lights everywhere and probes and all the rest. But what some people don't realize is you can actually turn icons off per type. And if you look at the drop down here, one, yes, you can raise and lower the size of them. And yes, you can just turn them off, but you can actually also come down and say, okay, well, I'm not working on lighting at the moment, so I can get rid of my lighting probes and I can get rid of my lights. And already my scene is looking less cluttered. And I can also turn off my particle effects. And you can do this so that you only work with, say, gameplay icons or lighting icons. So there's processes for if you're an artist or if you're a designer to work through your scene. And this means it's less cluttered, but you still get the benefit of having icons present. So let's get to the bit most of you are here for. We'll jump into the script. Now I've already set some of this up because I didn't want to go over how to do windows, etc. because that's not what the point of this video is. And I've done it plenty of times before, but I'll quickly dive through what we're actually doing here. So I've got a menu path, which will assign it into the right click on the project. I've got both a function to open the window and I've got a function to validate. And this validation is just going, you know, have we got scripts selected? And that's what this does. You get the asset, that you're looking at from the objects and you make sure they're mono scripts that are selected. If it's not, the option might be available on the right click. If it is, it will be. And that's how you do that. So we go into our GUI. Now, I went over this in a previous video recently, which is how to actually find items that have labels applied. And all the icons for script icons that I use here have all had this label applied called script icon. And I'll leave a link in the description for that video so you can go and see how to actually apply these labels. I'm not gonna go over it again here. Once I've found them all, I add them to my list ready to go. And now I have a simple GUI that basically says, if there's no icons assigned, show that there's no icons so people know to go and apply the label. Otherwise, let them select it. Now we've got a basic grid layout um, that you can select from. And once you've selected, I give people options because that's the best thing to do. You can either press return or escape. Return will apply, escape will leave the window. I let people double click 
on the icon to apply it or I let people press apply. And this deals with all sorts of users that are keyboard junkies or are just like using the mouse to basically move through their scene or their windows. And this lets them do it all free. So let's jump to the meat of this, which is the apply icon. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to search through all of our objects that we've actually got, our assets, and we're going to apply that icon. So selection the objects as we did in validation. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to get the path to that particular asset. Asset database dot get asset path. There we go to the asset. Now, I used to do this and I know a lot of people out there do because there didn't used to be this convenient uh, convenience option for applying icons. They used to get the metadata file that sits alongside the scripts and actually change the icon ID in that, do a string replace and basically enable that to actually show the icon. That's fine and all, but if they change the metadata, you're in trouble with how to apply that. And a better way to do that would be to use the importers. Now, every type, FBX, textures, anything that you bring into Unity has an importer. And you can actually use that importer in the convenience items on that importer to change things to do with how that object or asset is actually processed. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the mono importer for the script because that's the importer that's used on scripts. So asset importer get at path and then we give it the path that we just looked up and we'll just say that yeah, that's, an, that's a mono importer that we're interested in. Now, this has a convenience function that's not really told to anyone, but I'm going to tell you it here, which is set icon. And you can imagine what that does. You pass it an icon and suddenly it sets the icon for that particular script. Now, it does actually set it, but you won't see that straight away because you have to re-import the asset because that importer has to be processed. It has to run to basically do that. Now, there's an issue here. If I was to run this, it would actually import the asset every single time it comes through this for loop, which would make it quite a long process. Because as you saw, it runs some processing after you apply a script icon every single time. And there's actually a really cool convenience thing because Unity saw this happening. And it's called start asset editing. And what this does, if you put in stop asset editing here is it basically stops processing the assets each time it holds them in between these two functions and then at the end of it processes them all at once and it's really convenient and makes it super easy for you to process the script icons and then all we do is we say to refresh because we want it to refresh. That's obvious. So now we'll save and go back into Unity. Okay, so we're back in Unity. Let's see how that works. I will multiple click all these scripts and I'll right click, create, and here's my option, set icon, which is alive because I've got script set. And here is my window. It's got the grid popped up and these are the labeled icons that I have. And I could do several things here. I could select to use my company logo and have all my scripts just as my company logo. But for me, that doesn't make absolute sense because I want to have this as interactive items in my scene and I want to know they're marked as interactive. So let's select the magnifying glass and suddenly, as you can see, the magnifying glass changes and the reload happens in one single step because we put it in that loop. And this makes it super easy to come in and change the icon to whatever you want it to be. So if you got something out of this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. If you like this asset, I will leave a link in the description to where it is on the asset store. And if you're enjoying these videos, here's another one on screen now for you to watch.